Hi, I'm Stacey Zinn Roberts, and I'm the host of Live Your Passion. My guest today is Sayer G. Oh, I'm so excited to have him. Sayer is an author, he's a researcher, lecturer, and advisory board member of the National Health Federation. He founded Green Med Info in 2008 in order to participate in the world of open access, evidence-based, resource-supporting, natural, and integrative modalities. What that means is he runs this website where you can go and look up any type of medical condition and find a holistic approach. It's awesome. This, uh, this website, greenmedinfo.com, is widely recognized as the world's largest and most referenced health resource of its kind, receiving over 1 million visits a month. That's right, 1 million. Sayer co-authored a book called The Cancer Killers. It's available now on Amazon.com. And he also authors the website Eatomology, eat, eatomology.com, uh, and it talks about the edible philosophy of food. Sayer, welcome to Live Your Passion. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Well, I am so thrilled to have you. I've been uh, a longtime fan of your work, and you have answered so many questions for me. <laughs> for me. <laughs> I, I'm very enthusiastic about what you do. Uh, there's not a lot of people on the planet who do what you do, and it's so specialized, and I hope that we can help spread your message. So tell me, how did you first become interested in health issues? Yeah, um, so what drove me into what I do today is uh, my own experience with natural healing. I had been very sick as a child and throughout my adolescence and early adulthood, um, I dealt with a lot of, you know, drugs, uh, needing for asthma and surgeries, and it was through nutrition and and experiencing the healing associated with detoxification that that got me so involved in natural medicine. Tell me what you mean by detoxification. Well, you know, I it was fascinating to me because I had been um, looking into using things like. Um, like you know, colon cleansers and, and trying to get my liver um, in, in better shape and you know the old term for melancholy literally means black bile you know so melon and coli uh, bile and I remember when I was able to eliminate some of the accumulated um, toxins I felt such a joy it literally it was like this stuff was weighing me down so it kinda got me back into looking at you know, sort of the poetry of natural healing in the body and how it works, and um, it was it was a, it was a direct experience of healing that really got me excited about, you know, just communicating this to more people. And this started when you were a child, but you you pursued it as an adult, or, or when did you finally kind of like figure out the connection? How old were you? Um, it was probably around uh, eighteen. Um, I was in college and. I had been um, chronic, um, chronically dependent on inhalers for bronchial asthma since I was actually six months of age. And, and it was only through eliminating things like cow's milk that suddenly my asthma disappeared. And it got me really interested in, in the concept of kind of re, you know, regenerating my health. So I got deeply into it from that point onward. So you created GreenMedInfo.com and also Etymology.com with a partner, Tanya, correct? Yeah, we've been working together on this project. She's a chef and uh, I'm providing some of my experience just in terms of the philosophy of food and we're combining them. So what are the missions of the two websites? Because they, they are a little bit different, right? Yeah, GreenMedInfo is really my, my daily uh, passion. Um, it's what I, I try to promote the work of others in the field, um, some of whom actually have conventional licensure and certification and education. So we have some MDs that contribute all the way down to the mother, you know, who's raising a child who knows about the, the effect of nutrition. So we don't necessarily, you know, privilege one over the other. M motherhood is the best degree and the, the best credibility you can probably have on the planet. So it's not more important than an MD. Um, so that's where we're coming from. We do reference the, the hard and fast peer-reviewed research whenever possible, but we're also very open to just letting people speak their truth when it comes to healing and health. And so when people go to Green Med Info, 
it kind of explain how the process works. You input what information and get what information back. Well, we have a database at the core of 23,000 abstracts. It took about five years to review, summarize, and index them. So our database has about 2,300 different ailments that are indexed. So, for example, as you said, if someone has Crohn's disease or diabetes, they can go and look at the data from some of them very high-impact journals like the Journal of the Medical uh, American Medical Association to find research on, say, a natural compound that can help them. Um, so we provide that access. It's already there, actually, through the National Library of Medicine, but we just sort of concentrate the research to make it available more easily. And then we have articles daily provided for, you know, mainstream consumption as well as um, videos that are also um, relevant to natural integrative medicine. And then how was how is etymology different than Green Med Info? Um, etymology is a spin-off project. It's a way of trying to give people real tangible practical tools from how to cook you know, an avocado, well, actually you shouldn't really cook avocados, but to basically interact with food on more than just an intellectual level, but to appreciate it through experience and to really kind of expose the story of food, the mythos, so to speak, versus just the logos, the structure, because that's, I think, a large part of what we're missing. I think a lot of Joseph Campbell who said, you know, people aren't really looking for meaning in their life. I mean, we always talk about it as if it's all this existential, you know, thing, but it's really experience of being alive. And so, and that's also what I think you communicate to me through What's Your Avocado, and that's why, why I'm excited to be here with you now. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I think we do have the same, the same mission. Um, I'm trying to help people live the best version of their life so that they can become authentic. And I think you are too. I, I'd like for you to, to kind of describe your mission, your personal mission as it relates to health and healthy eating. Can you do that? Yeah, my personal mission is really to act as sort of a messenger to help disseminate research that already exists that empowers people so they can make an informed choice. Because without having the quote other side uh, represented, you know, unfortunately today we talk about natural medicine as if it was an alternative, when in fact for countless millennia it's been the default form of medicine, and only now do we have this new petrochemically derived type of medicine, which is the drug-based model, patented novel compounds that, you know, so it's very interesting to me that people think of natural medicine as somehow not evidence-based, when the largest multiculturally confirmed clinical trial is the, the recipes handed down to us from our grandmother and you know the basic natural remedies have been used for thousands of years so I want to help to reestablish the credibility of that form of medicine and part of that is is just the simple idea uh, as food as medicine right mm. yeah food is medicine and also looking at it almost as if we should never need, quote, medicine in the pharmaceutical sense. I mean, for emergency cases, absolutely. But when it comes to looking at, quote, symptoms, instead of suppressing them, letting them articulate their truth, if you have a fever, oftentimes it's so that the viruses won't replicate. So we don't need to suppress it. So let's use our food um, so that we don't need medicine. So it's actually nourishing us, helping support optimal health on a daily basis, and we're enjoying it at the same moment, which is the ideal. Okay. So, so many people don't eat, they, they don't, they've never been to a health food store, they don't eat organic. Um, how do we help people who are interested in this idea but they don't know how to start? What, what small steps can the average person take to just eat better so that their body works properly? It's a great question. One thing that you can do is to try to experience some food that's whole, that usually is a fruit, or, you know, vegetable. Avocado would be a perfect example. Yes. I mean, really, to me, an avocado is archetypal. It's one of the most perfect foods. And to eat in raw form, it's, you're not always going to be able to get organic. I hope you can find that or afford it. But when you're eating a raw food, that's how the entire infrastructure of our bodies were formed from, from time immemorial. So we, we need, quote, raw 
uncooked, unprocessed food to maintain our health. It's sort of inscribed into our very DNA. So if we're getting something, it could be a, a nut, it could be a fruit, you know, a, a sliver of peppermint or basil, that's going to help to reinvigorate us with the information that we need to stay healthy. And I watched another interview with you that was very technical, but I learned something from my layman's perspective. You talked about food having information, Sayer. Can you can you talk about that? That it was so such a cool idea. Yeah, it's a great new thing. Is that we're seeing that we've moved from looking at the body as a machine that just needs its building blocks, which would be the macromolecules, you know, fats, protein, carbohydrate, and then also just needing fuel, calorie content. And so food has traditionally been looked at either either a source of energy or fuel or material building blocks, and yet we've neglected to acknowledge that food actually directly interacts with the expression of the genes in our body. And there's actually a field known as nutrigenomics that has emerged which shows how on a molecular level these compounds do things like alter the expression of the genes by, you know, maybe modulating, um, you know, uh, was histones, the DNA is wrapped around these little proteins and, and by by preventing them from opening a certain way that actually prevents the gene from expressing so it's like we have the mechanisms now to understand how food provides information to our actual DNA and that kind of legitimizes food now because we were talking for so long about how food is medicine and you know there's all these gene based therapies drugs targeting certain genes well we know the foods have been doing that all along and yeah. that that's how we can recapture you know our health that's amazing. So, are there sir, is there a is there a superfood that everybody should eat that'll do that? Yeah, you know it's hard because sometimes the marketing is so strong, even for natural things today, that we think in terms of superfoods without really recognizing that apples, for example, or kale or garlic, all the ancient common foods that are you know kale is the garnish, you know, the display of food today are probably the most powerful and least markup from cost because you're not talking about some exotic acai berry that was refrigerated from the Amazon all the way to New York City. So <clears throat> the avocado, um, the gar garlic, ginger, you know, Greenman Info has all this data on natural compounds in like garlic killing multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, which has been called the upcoming white plague that the CDC doesn't know what they're going to do because there's no drug that can fight it. Well, garlic fights it according to the preclinical research. So we, we can use these foods to truly maintain our, our lives and save our lives in certain respects. <clears throat> and all of this information is available on greenmedinfo.com. It's such an incredible resource. Oh, I'm so grateful for you, for what you do, really. And, well, it, honestly, it, you make a big difference in the world. If people can find the information, it's here. It's a big deal. <laughs> Well, it's an honor to serve in whatever way we can. So tell me, you know, I ask every guest to explain their avocado moment. And, and what that means is I, I created the What's Your Avocado concept that says that every person, every person has something about them that's special. Everybody has a mission. We're all here to do something. We just have to figure out what that is. And obviously, you have. So tell me. Can you take me to the moment when you realized what you were supposed to do and how you're going to do it? Well, it's an interesting moment because I was in the airport and I was eating an apple. And, you know, airports are very hard for me because there's nothing living really usually I can find. And, and so I was eating the apple and I, 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 I appreciate seeds. And I know that apples have a type of cyanide-based compound that may kill cancer, for example. But I was looking at the seed, I was eating it, and it was almost like the apple was speaking to me that the seed is designed to pass through me so that it has future ability to produce apples. And, and, and it was almost as if in the, by experiencing food directly and really appreciating it, that this magic of food, because the apple is basically designed so us mammals can eat it, eat the flesh, and pass the seed through. And I was thinking, wow, what a beautiful logical design and ancient in construction this sort of complementarity of, of plant and animal and it just helped me realize that that's missing from the field of nutrition, the field of science, is that that ancient wisdom 
that we all need to bring back. And it, it sounds like poetry, it sounds like spirituality, but it's actually science today. We know the science supports it. So that was sort of like my what's my avocado moment, eating that apple. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, this show is called Live Your Passion. And you certainly do that. How, what steps did you take to kind of get to where you are and how would you offer advice to someone else, anyone watching who, who has a passion inside of them, maybe to do something outside of the norm? What, what steps would you suggest they take to live their passion as well? Well, I think for me, it just seems like I've always been designed this way, but my passions are really based largely on what I feel I can do to help others and so for me there's no difference like if I'm doing something and it's not really helping others then I don't feel like it's truly my passion and and so I think that has been successful for me like I originally created Freeman Info really as a nonprofit concept I almost went bankrupt doing it for five years I, I spent all that time in front of a computer and it was you know it was, it was quite a sacrifice but I, I needed to do it I never knew it would turn into anything else I mean, we got almost no visits initially until we started writing articles. People wanted to know more about us. So I would say follow your passion for sure, but make sure, too, that that passion is actually based on doing some good for others because ultimately there isn't really a difference. Like I feel like the welfare of others is my own welfare, and, and I think that's the moral fabric that holds us all together. So, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Follow your passion, but make sure compassion is part of that. You know that there's that two sides to the coin. That's so. It's not just you receiving; you're giving to others, and it becomes this symbiotic relationship. Help to others. That's the gift that you give yourself too. So it's um, yeah, it works out. It's good. Okay. In our final moments, tell me um, the well. How can people get your book? The new book is called The Cancer Killers, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of doing another relaunch because every month we have, you know, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the book was really designed to empower people with a different vision, not so much fear-based but empowerment-based. And they can get the book. You can go on Greenman Info. You could Google Cancer Killers Greenman Info, and we sell it through our site, or you can get it on Amazon. And um, I'll be actually doing some lectures. I'm going to be in Canada in September doing a, a talk if there's Canadians out there. On, on the cancer killers and so they can reach us through the website as well. Great, great. This 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 is gonna well we're in September. This show's gonna run in September. So what's the dates that you'll be there? I believe it's the sixteenth of September or this I'm sorry, seventeenth. Uh, it's gonna be at um, a chiropractic organization in Canada. So Okay. And after that date when can people reach you? Because this this show will be archived and people can watch it forever. So are there any other events coming up that you want them to know about or um, how else they can get in touch? Sure, we're doing um, monthly webinars and we're also launching a, a radio network uh, in November. Um, so we'll have a lot of uh, you know free content and whatnot to share on Greenman Info. So. And um, is there a membership or anything at Greenman Info or etymology, anything like that? Uh, did you say membership? Uh, yeah, we offer free access, and then there's um, other, um, for those who are professionals and who want the data in a certain way, there's definitely a membership uh, option. Um, but most of our visitors just use the free contacts. Okay. Do you consult as well? Can people contact you for other services? Yeah, I have done the consulting. Um, I'm, I'm definitely open to it. So I like to share what I've learned. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something I'm open to. Good, and then you'll also speak at conferences on these issues if people need to have that information in a large yeah, group. I that, so I'm always available for that sort of thing as well. Okay, good. Give us your email so people get in touch. Sure. That's Sayer, my name, S-A-Y-E-R, last name J-I, at greenmedinfo.com. Sayer, thank you so much. I have enjoyed this thoroughly. Thank you. I love what you're doing. I love you. And uh, yeah, everyone's lucky to have your show, including myself. Oh my gosh. Yay, my day is made. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. And this has been Live Your Passion. I'm Stacey Zinn Roberts.